All right, we are starting 1.2, which is called extending the number line. So first we're gonna start with vocabulary. So go ahead and get all this written down. I did fold my paper in half so you can kind of see the, the line there a little bit. If you would like to draw a line, that's fine. Um, so the first one is rational numbers, which are uh, numbers that can be expressed as one integer a, which is like italicized a, divided by another integer b, where b is not zero. Um, so basically it would look like this. A fraction. <laughs> um, So B has to be a non-zero because any number divided by zero uh, has no answer. Um, it's a, you'll get like, if you put it on a calculator, it would say error. You can't do that. Um, and then we have a negative number, um, which is a number that is less than zero. So like in money, um, negative five dollars means that you owe five dollars. That's a dollar sign. Uh, not that you could tell, but that's what that is. Um, and then the opposite of that would be a positive number, which is a number that is equal to or greater than zero. Okay. They are opposites. Because they are the same distance. Remember, I kind of did that in 1.1. Distance from zero on the number line. But in different directions. Okay, so for example, if I have a number line here, zero, I'm going to take positive five and negative five. Okay. They are the same amount of bunny hops away from zero in either direction. Five this way, five this way. It's just that negative five is to the left of zero and positive five is to the right of zero. Okay, they are opposites. 
Um, and those, these are integers, positive, neg negative numbers. Those are integers. So I'm going to turn the page because I'm running out of room. Why are you so crooked? There we go. Um, it says, where are the following pairs of numbers be located on the number line? I'm on the next page. Right here, these. So I'm gonna do this for you because I think this is really important. If you don't understand number lines and such things, then <laughs> this is not gonna go well for you. So I'm gonna have my number line, I'm gonna make it very long. Yes, I would do this in your notebook too. I'm going to have zero right in the middle. And then I'm going to start with the first one, which is seven. Um, so seven and negative seven. So we have, I'm going to put seven, positive seven up here and negative seven back here. Okay. 21 over two and negative 21 over two. So you probably look at that and you're like, well, I have literally not a clue how to do that. Um, but because 21 is larger than two, you can just divide it. Okay. Remember that's all that line means. Uh, this line right here, this just means divide. Okay. So, um, I know that 20 divided by two would be 10. So 21 divided by two would be 10 and a half. Okay. Um, clearly I did not think that one through. So I'm going to extend this a little bit on both directions. So this would be 10 and a half, otherwise known as 21 over two. And then this is going to be a negative 10 and a half, otherwise known as negative 21 over two. Can you see that? No, you can't. There you go. Okay. It doesn't not need to be a perfect amount. I'm just kind of sketching. So the next one is negative three and a half and three and a half. So if seven is here, zero is here, three and a half is going to be exactly halfway between those two. So I'm gonna ballpark it right around here. And then this would be three and one half. 0.5 and one half like this, exactly the same thing, okay? And then same thing here, negative three and a half would go there, halfway between zero and negative seven. And then negative a half and one half. So I'm going to put a half about right here because it's between zero and one. And then negative one half would go right there. Okay. If you feel pretty confident on this, then you're in a good place. If this made no sense to you, uh, we have a problem. You're going to need to do some YouTube research, watch some videos. All right. So, um, uh, moving on to part A, number one. It says, estimate the values for points A through E. So I'm going to put A, B, C, D, E, uh, yeah, okay. So looking at point A right here, this is where I'm at. Uh, if you look, you can see that um, to the left is negative 8, and then A, and then negative 6. Clearly, it is going by 1s. So between negative 8 and negative 6, going by 1s would be negative 7. Uh, feel free to pause this video at any time. It would be really nice if you could try to fill these in on your own, and then watch the video, and then kind of catch up with me. Um, then we have, uh, part or uh, point B, which is sitting right on negative four. So that is going to be negative four. 
C is sitting between negative 2 and the line that would count for negative 1. So it's going to be negative 1.5. Now, I could imagine that you would get really confused on this part, okay? Because you would look at that and you would want to say negative 2.5. You have to remember the bigger numbers are going this direction. So negative two and a half would actually be right here. Okay, so this is between negative one and negative two. It is not quite negative one, but has not quite reached negative two yet either. So uh, it's going to be negative one and a half. Okay. Um, D is between positive four and positive 5, so it's going to be 4.5. And then E is between positive 6 and positive 7, but it is clearly closer to positive 7 than it is to positive 6, so we're going to say positive 6 point, we'll say 6.8 approximately. If you want, you can do the approximately lines that are two squiggles like that. Uh, number two, for each value you estimate in part one, state the numbers opposite. So if this is the number for A, the opposite of uh, negative seven would be positive seven. Opposite of negative four would be positive four. Opposite of negative 1.5 would be positive 1.5. Opposite of positive 4.5 would be negative 4.5 and the opposite of approximately positive 6.8 would be negative 6.8. Number three says a thermometer can be thought of as part of a vertical number line on which values above zero are positive. Sketch a thermometer, vertical number line. So vertical means up and down. So it's going to go like this for the thermometer. And place the following temperatures on it. Uh, obviously, mine is not very big, so you might want to consider making yours bigger. Actually, you know what I would do um, to conserve space? I would put mine over here. Because look at now I can take up this whole section and I won't be in the way. Boom. Okay. So I'm going to do, first I'm going to look at the numbers here. Because we have quite a bit of a stretch. So I'm going to put zero here in the middle. And then I'm going to have my biggest number uh, for the positives. So this, this whole section would be positives. My, the biggest number is 115, so I'm going to put 115 right there. And then my lowest number is negative 32.7. So down here I'm going to have um, probably around here-ish. I'm going to have negative 32.7. So this is all degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's not where that goes. Degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So then we have zero right here. Got that. So now we need to do working from left to right, negative 15, which is going to be approximately here-ish. So negative 15. Uh, negative 32.5, which is going to be right above. I'm going to write on this side, negative 32.5. Positive 40 is going to be like hmm, here-ish, we'll say. So positive 40. And then positive 113.2, which is going to be uh, like right here, 113.2. And then we have negative 32.7 already right here. So this is kind of what it should look like. Okay. Could you fit this on the small one? Yes, but it would be much more cramped and hard to read and not as realistic. So now we have number four. 
How do the number lines from part one and three help you find which of two number, what? How do number lines help you find which of the two numbers is greater? What a strangely worded question. Well, we have two different number lines, right? We have this, the vertical one, and then the uh, horizontal one. So I think this kind of is you like your opinion on, because um, it says, how do they help you find which of the numbers um, are greater? So I think you're just going to have to put something like, I think... that um, the horizontal, which is this one, line helps blah, blah, blah. That's going to be your opinion. And then uh, you're going to continue on to say the vertical line helps blah, blah, blah. So you need to talk about how both of them help you kind of like figure out where uh, the numbers go. Please do make sure that you have actually written an answer for these um, because you can't just leave it like this in your notebook. Like you need to, you need to have something written here um, in your own words. Okay. So, um, we are going to do parts B through D together in class, but please make sure you have all of this done and ready to go.